land you, drop them off, they'll have them sorted so you can pick them up uh, as you come back in tomorrow. And again, 6.30, uh, we'll be reception. U.S. Space and Rocket Center uh, at the Davidson Center. If you haven't been there, if you haven't had uh, an opportunity to walk under a Saturn V, uh, it's a, an impressive site, and I think something you'll enjoy. Um, Dr. Charlotte Nixon is uh, on the IT faculty at Calhoun Community College, where she is responsible for teaching computer forensics, cyber terrorism, and ethical, ethical hacking courses. Uh, she holds a PhD in education, a PhD in management, also a master's in business, a master's in cyber security, and is a uh, Six Sigma black belt. Uh, she's spoken to B-Sides in Memphis and has been one of the co-organizers for bringing B-Sides to Huntsville. So please welcome Dr. Charlie Nixon to the stage as she discusses mobile forensics and social analysis. We're going to make it sure that we will end early because we want the party going. Yay! <laughs> By the way, I got wet today all, all the way through. My friend Meredith brought me a, a, a dress. So that's why I got a new dress right now I'm wearing. But anyway, besides the weather, um, I am so grateful and very thankful to be here. It's such an opportunity to be with DC Council. So thank you so much, Erin. I really appreciate the opportunity as well as the small. Yeah, that's the brain right there as well. Can we give him a hand for giving this? So we can keep us from here, Diane. We can put a hand if you would like to thank you guys for having us here. And I will start, forget all about that, because my teacher in CISO told me that you must be a um, certified magnet um, examiner, because uh, that's all you do. You just take certification and then just pass and pass. And I said, no, I eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly so I can pass all of that, because I'm not a first timer, I'm a second timer. So, <laughs> if I'm a first timer, then I will not, I will not be here. Maybe I will be watching the issues. Yeah. So let me start. Um, how many of you saw this video already online? No, you saw this one yet. So, um, I think the woman will like it more. Yeah, they have a bridge. 
So let me tell you something. I know um, a lot of us know about our uh, how our um, Android is actually overpassing everything. It used to be equal with Mac, and now pretty much Android is moving so fast. With 7 billion population, actually it's almost like the number of Android devices is 900 million. The apps is 1 million, and also we have a lot of games as well as some of it are actually uh, infected with viruses and threats. And that's actually 1.5 of all of our games. So there's, th we have to think about on how can we actually protect our identity or our, even all our um, phone numbers. That's very important because this one right here is tracking us in everything we do. I'm going to show a last video as well that will track us on everything that we do. But right now, the total Android app is 40, 48 billion. And according to the statistics, that there is actually, in Facebook, is a, is a country, is the third world largest country. It is. Because Facebook population is actually 300 million, which is close to American. Uh, our population is around 323 million. China is 1.3 chains, somewhere like that. And then India is 1.29. So Facebook is the third, the third one. We, like, we try to look at mobile device threats. And where are they coming from, mainly? Mainly they come from our phones or any devices that you use. That's why I always encourage the students or every time I go speak, that you always make sure to have two computers. I know we're not rich, but at least one for personal and one for financial browsing. That's just the, the normal trends right now. Because if you do have one computer and you use it for all your browsing, for financial and for your personal browsing, you can actually increase the threats of your um, computer and increase the virus, increase malware, spiders, and all of them. There's a lot more. There's the hidden spyware, there's the phishing screens, the background processes, there's the ransomware that are new right now, there's the drag and play viruses that are coming as well. So 174 million, how, how, how much do you think each person, average person, actually is being um, charged for identity theft losses per person? I know some of you might not have, but they average it out. At least close to 300 million, that's what it is. And the whole total is actually 400 billion. Is that amazing? How much identity theft they can actually get from our information? Average cost of bridge right now is 5.5 million, so that's a lot, isn't it? So we need to take care of something. The best thing is that all those freeware, just be aware that you're all, they're also getting free information from you. So I always want to look for the permissions and what the permissions. Don't believe on the reviews. Even though it says five stars, it doesn't mean that they're good. Because the review doesn't really show you once you go for an install. Permission will not show you what is really you're, you're committed to uh, give up. Pretty much you're giving up everything anyway with the cloud right now, don't we? We're just going to surrender ourselves to the cloud because that's what we're doing. So permission is very important because most of the time it will always try to access the network. That it will always say full network access. You don't see that because that's hidden. You have to go all the way down when you when you go for a freeware. What are the freeware apps right now that you can get? Do you get freeware from your bank? Do you get a free apps? What do you think they can get out of uh, out of you for, for actually downloading the apps? They will have to have everything, full network access, they will have to have remote connections, they can disconnect your own network, they can dial you. Not only that, if they can have that information, most of these apps are coming from China as well, and we want to make sure as well that all our phones are actually from the United States, not to say bad things from China. Because there was actually a breach like two months ago, where some of the phones that came from China, they already embedded and planted bars to it. So you might want to check your phone and see if it's made in China or somewhere else. Because you never know. 
That's my mom's dad, you never know. I think that one is the ring. And um, just last night, I googled, I googled something out, and you know Google is always a good tool to use. And I googled my friend, that's why I don't really use Facebook account, so this is where I'm trying to hack my friends with their account. So, she's, anyway, she's in Canada, she doesn't know me. <laughs> oh, by the way, at the end, recording. So what I did was that I tried to actually hack to her information, not even using a tool, I just go, um, click on her picture, and as soon as I click on her picture, I go um, view source, and that's the result of the view source right there. This one. And so when I view source, I press control F. And then just try to find the word like um, the FP or account information. So as soon as I had that, I actually went to the Facebook graph API, and this is your this is your website right here, graph.facebook.com. And then when I when I actually put that in, I put the user ID right there. It pulls out that information right there, so it gives me all the information. Now, if I'm going to use a tool, what I'm using right now, I use the uh, Internet Evidence Provide. I mean, for instance, I actually ask permission to all my tools that I use today because uh, with the grant that we won from cybersecurity grant, so I was able to actually purchase a lot of um, equipment for security. Thanks to the help of Robert Gear, he's one of my instructors as well. So I got all the equipment and uh, we, we wrote a grant for, um, I think it's almost, I'm not really sure, five million, but it's a consortium for five different universities and we were adding more stuff for forensic and SCADA as well. So you know Paul is really good in SCADA. So this is what I did. I actually used the internet evidence forensic to find, see if all the information that I gathered from Facebook, if they are malicious. Because if they do, IEM will actually tell me right here what are, if it, is there a phishing? Is it a phishing sign? Is it a malware sign? Does it have a pornography sign? And I have a student who will only show up if I'm teaching the pornography part of it. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name, but every time I say, okay, next week we're going to be um, actually using the carbon tool equipment, I use this $99 um, pornography tool equipment, and it works pretty good. That's his job. He will always tell me, I'll be there, I'll make sure I'll show up for that. So it, it pulls out all the details and information, right? There. It's going to tell me everything. So I can actually use my mobile phone right there. And you can download this one as well for free for 30 days. So I can pull out all the images and make sure that there's no virus or there's no malware for it. If you go to IEF.com, you'll see there um, their free download or 30 day download. And this one right here, I use Carbon. I use the device position to pull out some information about one of our um, faculty. And I was able to pull out all of the information using the device position. So from all of his password and all of his history, everything I pulled out from an iPhone. So you can see in there all the email address it shows and it pulls out. The nice thing about this software is that even though our school is actually, every night it decreases, it still pulls out all the information. And there is it right there. There is the forms there. So, girls, if you think you're suspicious of your boyfriend, it's $99 you can buy it. It does pull out some very good information from it. And I had uh, one student who were actually chatting from our old phones, and we were in um, Skills USA. So I did a forensic, just a, this one is like a $77 tool. I did a forensic investigation to it, 
and he was fixing to have a um, divorce anyway, so it doesn't matter. So he was talking to this lady out in, I think this was in, it has to be either UK or something. And I pulled this information even though the computer decreased because I was able to pull all the information out. So, the nice thing about these tools right here is that some of them you can, you know, it's an open source. Like you can go datarecovery.com for free. There's, they're, they're very good data doctors. How many of you heard of that? So they're, they're very good tools, but they're not forensically um, safe to use for Lego. You can't use them. It has to be something um, authentic, like say for example, NCASE or um, FPK. Those are forensic sound. Those you can use it for uh, legal purposes. This one is more for your personal use, for your personal design. But it still works though. If you're looking for something, it still works on, on that end. So everybody knows about NFC, isn't it? It's the internet of internet. It's the internet of things. That's going to be the next two years from now. Everything is going to be all about your RFID. Have you heard about uh, the doctor who got uh, a virus from the embedded chips that they put in in his um, town? So he, I'm going to show you that. Where? Now this, a wireless hotel room key. Radio. Rewind. Wild about the wireless frontier. It's a privacy nightmare. Walt Augustinowitz is the guy who warned us that new wireless credit cards, like the ones with this logo, are easily hacked. And there's your MasterCard. He rigged up a portable scanner, and when he got near people's wallets, Walt could read their credit card numbers. That's actually your Amex, uh, probably an Amex Blue. Now, Walt says he's found an even bigger breach. <laughs> He says thieves don't need a scanner anymore, and they don't even need to be anywhere near you to steal a credit card number from a wireless card. How's that? Cell phones. There's an antenna behind here. Certain new phones contain something called NFC, Near Field Communication. The app that makes your phone your wallet. It's the innovation behind services like Google Wallet. With Google Wallet, you can pay with your phone. It stores account numbers then transmits them to cash registers on demand. You lock Google Wallet with a pin, so it's more secure than a physical wallet. But Walt twisted the technology. Put this over, and that's how you pay. He's figured out that when there's a phone with NFC near a wireless credit card, the phone can secretly pull account numbers. One makes the other completely dangerous. Yes, your phone could be stealing your credit card number. A hacker can pull off the heist by remote. Lazy but lucrative pickpocketing. It'll actually scan the credit card and secretly send off the data to an email address anywhere in the world. An infected phone could really go to work in a crowd. The screen could be blank, but in the background, the virus is scanning for credit card numbers. You've got mail. You're going to have a person on the other end watching their email box to fill up with credit card information uh, without ever having to get near you. Be in a world of what? Even more alarming is how easily hackers could infiltrate our phones. Walt worries we could unknowingly grant them access in an app. Say attempting new game is free, so you snag it. But what you really install is a credit card stealing virus. Phone. From the minute they downloaded it, whether they played it or not, it's sitting there looking for these credit cards. For all the convenience and wonder of wireless technology, Walt says this is the downside. Having to keep up with crooks. So he recommends exchanging wireless credit cards for old-fashioned ones. And for cellular users, downloading what he has. Virus protection. Virus protection, isn't it? From our phone. You can buy it for $19.99, free for... I'm not trying to sell. That's what my student told me in my evaluation. She seems like she's selling everything for us. No. But anyway, it's a really good protection if you guys have the virus protection from your phone. Uh, Semantic is a good one. And um, Kaspersky, also $19.99 a month. But that also protect all your data. Or you can also buy like um, like fraud insurance as well. There is a fraud insurance for our phones. In fact, I was just um, 
interview by, I think it was ABC um, local channel, and they asked me, you know, how are we going to put that our PII data information for the hospital? And the best thing you can do is always batches and always buy insurance, fraud insurance, identity theft insurance. That's a big, that's a big time right there. That's what that's that's that that's, that's needs to be done because information is the next big thing. I can get a lot of information from you. So what is the future and what are the risks of mobile phones right now? What do you think? Without reading my slides. So the next really big one, which we talk about from our class, is actually the embedded wearable RFID. Okay, look at this one. This is actually right here. It takes you about five minutes and the operation is done. And one of the doctors in the UK did it for research and he actually had a virus after a week of using it. So other risks as well is that it can cause cancer. That's not really proven yet, but that's what they said that once you implant something in your skin, it can cause some cancer. And the Facebook is going to be the new form of tagging RFID. Because the next future, according to the RFID expert, uh, Dr. Aldrich, is that it's going to be everyone will be tagged. In what way, in what purposes are we, are we going to use that? For the Homeland Security, it will be for what? Citizenship. You know I'm a teacher, so I have to ask questions in it. <laughs> Citizenship. Citizenship? Very good. Yes, sir. For our health. For our health. For our health. Yes, that is that is correct. What else? Clear channel to the airport. Channel to the airport. But mainly, what they want to uh, protect us is actually to protect criminals, protect our data. So to me, there's some insecurity right there. Isn't it? Because hackers are everywhere. We have the Black Hawk, we have the tour going on right now in other countries. What else do we have? We have all the underground, the animals. Those, those people are also trying to get information from us through data. Isn't it? But the major cause why they want us to use RFID is actually for national ID card for all the citizens. To make you easier to go, um, what is it like? You go to airport, so all you have to do is swipe it in your hand. Then that's one thing that they want to do. It will replace all the barcodes in the next two to five years. That's what's going to be. That's going to be the next big thing. It's going to it's going to replace. It's they call RFID as Internet of Things. They want to place this for everyone, so they can inventory. They can track us. What else can what, what, what else can they do from us? They have all the data anyway. Total control. Total control, there you go. We're surrendering pretty much. The only thing we can prevent is that to make our to, to get our safety is that we have to be aware of ourselves and what how can we protect from all of these data breaches. Yes, sir. That is true because they use that for dogs. <laughs> next time, in the next two years, we'll be like dogs. We can be anywhere and they can track us. Do you know who is the number one uh, buyer for RFID chips? Government? Wrong. Google? Google? Close. We're getting warmer. Amazon. Amazon? And you know Amazon is going to be the next big thing. I'm telling you, Amazon is actually planning in the next two years to bring all our package in Rome. But they only have a limit of 1,200 anyway to fly. But that's what they're planning to do. How many of you watched the Amazon Rising? That was a very good story. Is it it? Jeff Bezos is trying to have this very big vision of getting all his product in seconds. And if it doesn't arrive in seconds, you get to have it for free. 
I'm just joking. He's already losing because <laughs> he wants to compete with Walmart. Let me go back to my thing. But anyway, the really big thing, why is it that the, the biggest buyer is actually China? China is the largest, uh, the, the largest country that orders RFID ch chips to place in pockets, wallets, and also for information of their in, um, employment, personal information, as well as they want to track all their people. We're not communists, but it seems like that's going to be the next big thing. They want to track all of our information, isn't it? Oh, did I get all of that ready in there? Okay. So cloud infrastructure, that's gonna be one of the big the biggest one that we're gonna face this year right now. So we will have a lot of data rich information that you can get out of the cloud. Dropbox, what else do we use? Moodle. What other um, cloud infrastructure that is offering all of this information? Google Cloud. Google Cloud, there you go. And in the industry of cars and insurance, um, this September is going to be the black box for cars. They're going to put in black box for cars, for all new models of cars. And I know some of you probably have that. Then how many of you have black box for your cars ready? <clears throat> what is the purpose of black box for your cars? <laughs> Mainly it's supposed to be for insurance purposes. But it can actually do some more other things, other information than insurance, really. Sure, if you drive, drive like this. If you drive like that, or if you're texting or something like that. Man, we're being tracked anywhere. We're not even in the plane, but we're being tracked everywhere we go. Nobody is paying us to track. So, I saw, I saw some YouTube that Korea is one of the big ones that uses a lot of black box. It is. Hmm? It is. I was there for two and a half years. Right. So do you think you want to argue with that? To buy a new car with a black box on it? Maybe for my kids, I will have to do that. That's why I won't give my son 16 year old a car right now. Because I drove him this morning at 6 o'clock at the Cater campus and he just want to go rush all the way through. Maybe you won't get DUI if the black box drives you home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm going to get the next one. And so here comes the, um, who do you think is going to be the next mobile provider, the leading mobile provider? Do you think it will be Sprint, AT&T, Verizon Wireless? And who do you think is the biggest provider of mobile industry internationally? T-Mobile? Verizon? Virgin. Virgin? Virgin is only in... I'm just kidding. But you said it was going to be big. Branson. Yeah, it's going to be T-Mobile and uh, Verizon. Those are the biggest because they are international. And in other countries, they actually, in Japan, because I call all my friends before I talk here, I have to do my due diligence, and I said, give me all the list of what, what, how they can get you by the phone with a contract. Because anyway, we buy a phone with a contract, isn't it? What do we get? $49 for your phone for a two-year contract. But in Japan, they can get a um, 65-inch TV and an Apple for free. Why don't we have that in here? In, um, in Canada, they get, they get like different types of gifts, items, like big ones. You know? No, I'm from Canada. We get screwed worse than you guys when it comes to hearing. <laughs> <laughs> My friend told me, yeah, I signed up for this and I got this big gift. You know, there's no such thing as unlimited in Canada. I regularly have $500 in my phone bill. Whoa. Wow. Well, my country in the Philippines, we're the big testing country in the whole world. Because we test. We cannot afford to buy phone contract. So we don't get anything. We get the scrap from the US to there. But Japan, uh, Singapore, they do have to offer a lot of, they even have Disney as a mobile provider in there. And then you can go for Disney. 
or green. So the next big thing is actually Google Chrome and Google Talk. How many of you use that? Because you don't even use, as long as you have a Wi-Fi, who needs a phone? You can use your old uncontract phone and you can use it for your kids. Don't buy them a phone, just let them use Google Talk and then install the Google Voice. Um, apps like Talkathon, Group IP, or BoxArts.com. You can use those sites, download it, and then put it from your old phone and give it to your kids to save money. As long as they have Wi Fi, and when they're in school, they can get Wi Fi, isn't it? They can proxy to it because I teach in my school, my, my kids are very smart. They proxy everything out. So don't more documents on the other proxy for you. How do you get away with that, guys? Just don't say anything. And the last one we have is that we have also got the Skype, Viber, the social media, media sites as well, and the drones. Best thing in here actually to look at is phonescoop.com and also locate cell to look at some of your um, cell tower information or um, where is your phone, if your phone is lost or something like that. If you want to know more about the phone, phone reviews and carriers, you can use that website. So I'm going to give you now to James. He's one of my students and we go to um, to go to Kroger's to, where do we go James? To get some Wi-Fi connection? Yeah, and spying on people. Spying on people. He's going to talk about, I, I mentor him about his invention. He got some inventions going on, so I'd like to you to meet one of my students, James Coleman. So, you can find me on Google by searching for Mr. Go. That's my nickname that I go by everywhere. Some of my hobbies include programming, electronics, photography, videography, and just as of yesterday, I'm certified in CA. I'm currently going to college for cyber insurance, and I've been asked to share some of my stuff, so I'm going to share you some of the projects that I've done. Starting off, I've created a clock because I was, uh, you know, annoyed that I didn't have a clock in my room. I had to look at my phone to find what time it is and all that. So I decided to start making a clock. So I found this thing called Nixie tubes. Nixie tubes are made in Russia, and they basically display a number with, um, I'm guessing it's some sort of thing that's like what you would have in a light plate. This is what it looks like whenever I have completed it. you got the different numbers, hours, minutes, seconds, and these are all the components of it. To start off on the right, we have an Arduino. The Arduino is basically the brains of the operation. I have Bluetooth added on and all kinds of things to that. Then I have the real time clock. The real time clock provides the current time to the Arduino, which it's able to read and display. Above all that, we have the SIF registers and the logic gates. The SIF registers basically allows me to have many different outputs from the Arduino with just three things. So those are eight bits, so it's eight times three because there's three of them. And the logic gates, what they do is, depending on the higher or low of the four pins that goes into them, it chooses which number to put into ground. Whenever it's put to ground, the electricity is able to flow, and you get the uh, number displayed on the screen. So, this costs about $300 to make. It's getting into electronics is expensive. Now, why did I make this? Well, I need a clock, of course, as I said earlier. And Nixies are awesome. Another thing I made. After I heard about all these watches that are going on, like, you know, the Android watches, the Apple is supposed to announce one down in September, maybe. We don't know. They are so secretive. So I made my own. This is my watch. It is basically a Raspberry Pi with a TFT screen put on top of it. All that I did was I put the screen on it. I used HTML and JavaScript to design the interface that displays the current time. And I told it to run Midori full screen on the Debian OS. 
with this, I can do all kinds of things in terms of an NRA Raspberry Pi. You can hook up the headphones to listen to music. You can hook it up to a TV with RCA, or you can use HDMI. With that, you can watch TV shows, like you put them on there, watch TV shows, listen to music, whatever you want. So it's way better than being able to watch a super out there. Can I add to that one real quick? And what we're planning to do in the future, maybe in the next five years, it might be added in your hand as well. So you can watch your TV, RFID, kind of like that. So that's, that's going to be the future. That's what we're, we're planning to do. That's why I'm trying to mentor him. Can you, can you Wi-Fi into Chrome? Chrome? You, you can Wi-Fi. They don't have Chrome on there. Huh? Oh. So this is Midori. Midori is a web-based web browser that runs on ARM and Debian. So, it, you can have Wi-Fi. I have a little USB stick that you can plug in there. It gives you both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So, yeah, you can have Wi-Fi. And you can hook up the mouse and keyboard with the USB ports too. And control it on that display that I wouldn't recommend it because that display is 320 by 240. So it's still small. But you can hook it up to a TV with the HDMI and it will work fine. you got Ethernet. And there's HDMI of it. So that's my watch I made. And the first project I started on was I wanted a phone that I can walk around Walmart and have people stare at me. So I asked my grandmother if she had one of those old phones. You know those ordinary phones? And she had one. So I got an ordinary phone. And I made it Bluetooth. So you can dial it just like a regular phone. Put your finger in it, dial it, and you're actually dialing it. Unlike these two days phones, which you're actually pushing a touch for. Here you've got the power switch and the charging port where you can recharge it. The batteries should last for months. I haven't recharged it since I made it back in January and it's still working today. For the sense. Yeah. And then you the internals of it. You got the programming port, so you can reprogram it if you wanted to. Like I had a, uh, some code written to make it into a jukebox where you dial a number and it plays a song. It runs off the adrenal, and then the Bluetooth port is also on below it. And I have an amplifier for that speaker, which I can turn off and on. And that speaker is used for like, the ringtone or playing music. The battery control is at the top right, and the batteries are underneath the rotary. Most of these projects I have made, I make them open source. The exception is that clock, because I haven't had the time to finish it. But whenever I have complete, everything for that will be open source. You can find all my uh, travels of going through and making these electronics go into my blog. You can go to GitHub and get the source code for all the things that I'm making, and that's it, I guess. You got your NFC too. Your uh, yeah, I have an NFC ring. He wanted me to show that. So he can access everything out. But anyway, I'd like to end up that you guys protect your um, your data, your information as well as your cards. Make sure to uh, buy one of these. RFID shields. You can actually use a regular um, foil to do it. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You guys have a very wonderful night and thank you so much. Thank you, James. Okay, that's the wrap up today. We'll see you kind of tomorrow. Uh, you guys remember, like I said, you got to check out on the way out and then also uh, remove your. Uh, you can capture your hand and drop it up there so the wrong way they still can pass back out again. Thanks so much for if you guys go to the party for the Hazen Center on uh, 6 30. Free, free drinks, so you should come take advantage of that. Okay. Is there a ride to the hotel from there or is it um, you drive out there or what's the deal? What's that? I know last year they had a, a bus going to it from the hotel. Shoot, that's a good point. I don't know. Dave, let me see if I can get Devonna to find that out. Brian, you know what all the stuff I have to unhook? Can I leave this rig here? <laughs>